by now. One hundred percent. That already is one. <laughs> that's that's not something you see commonly in esports. <laughs> 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 anyway, Ooh, uh, the okay. next match will be Crane versus Orange. Uh, I see they're both being almost ready, um, and this is an elimination match because it's the losers. Uh, match uh, the losers bracket actually. Yep. Uh, both of them uh, lost their first matches, and now they uh, will be playing against each other. Uh, do you remember exactly who do uh, who was the opponents for both of the players, Raven? And uh, no, well, Crane lost to JJ mm -hmm. in the in the first series of yep. the day, so that was uh, unfortunately you know like a sort of team knockdown. And then we saw Orange versus Hoy, where Hoy continued his. Demolition with with uh, Hoy with, with Druid, the Frio so. with Druids on nine. He's also having a great far. day. First yeah. off, he just wins all his Druid games. Then he gets extra prizes, I guess. I, I for guess for, the, for, for um, losing that. Uh, I guess the hug and the kiss <laughs> from the girl is like she like will take all the luck out of Hearthstone now. So he will lose oh, okay. all three now. now. I'm, I guess. <laughs> we will see. We can see the bracket on the screen now. So you know what we were talking about before. It's going to be uh, JJ versus Hoy uh, later on. But for now, we do have Crane versus Orange, and then Sixo and Life Coach in the lower bracket. Wow, mm -hmm. that's crazy that's really actually a sick game as yeah. well, right? So, uh, Tessin and Stansivka, hmm. that would be a cool match. I mean, we didn't need to see much from Tessin; he was always like kind of wrecking people, right? Three zero against Sixo, mm. three one against uh, three one in the group stage, three one in the group stage. But uh, now, super high, uh, super high. <laughs> Super high. Super Crane. High. He's feeling pretty super now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it, this is what you get when you read and, and talk at the same time. That multitasking. Yeah, multitasking is really bad. I mean, for ho thank God I'm playing Hearthstone, not a game when you actually have to multitask like Starcraft or something like that. Uh, but uh, Orange and Crane, uh, who's your favorite? Hang on, what are you asking me? Favorite for this match or just my favorite, favorite person? Match, because I'm they're I'm very not different. Asking private questions. <laughs> oh, I don't okay. care what do you don't do with him in the evening. So <laughs> don't put me on the spot, because yeah. um, obviously you're my favorite. Oh, there my you go. God, I'm uh, blushing. <laughs> good thing I'm off camera. Well, I think uh, in all seriousness, what's good is both these players aren't really too shaken with their losses. Even Orange, after you know the 3-0 loss, which was pretty rough versus Hoy, was like, you know what? I think I played pretty well overall. Mm -hmm. It's just you know it was one of those things. I'm used to Yog doing Yog things a lot of the time, so you know both players are in a pretty good mindset overall. And I think uh, Orange actually said he's not really played against Crane too often in tournaments either. So he's looking forward to actually just well, to play against him anyway, just to have a good match. To be fair, Crane didn't really appear in that many tournaments. That's yeah. the thing. Right, he was playing in the last BGL, but that's about it. Uh, and of course, the Dream Hack. Just like yeah, the pre yeah. Uh, and even summer as well. But let's talk about the bands. Exactly. Iko, what do you see? Yeah, well, first thing that pops into my uh, pops into my eyes immediately is both players pick the priest. Sure, mm -hmm. it was third pick and uh, not first pick like <laughs> in Tansivka's match, but yeah, uh, both players uh, trusting in their uh, priest abilities in this particular matchup to take a, a win po potentially. Mm -hmm. Probably not three in this scenario like Stansif Kacha attempted to, I but... I believe yeah. as well, this is one of the closest sort of mirror match lineups we've seen. Like Action, almost all in the past two days, right? Like there's literally only, only the Shaman and Druid is the difference here. Yeah. Both players pick Mage, both have picked Priest, However, so it's kind of crazy. it's Freeze Mage and yeah. Temple Mage, right? Because oh, Orange nice. is playing the Temple Mage and Crane is playing Freeze Mage. So that this will be true. different. And this is actually a huge advantage for Crane since his Freeze Mage will wreck a Priest. Most most likely. I'm and not going <laughs> on a limb here, but... And the priest lists are also different, uh, yep. because Orange plays Dragon Priest and uh, Crane does play the Control Priest that also Stansivka was playing. Okay, makes sense. So, actually, it's not that near to each other. Yeah, in, in class choice, yes, at least. Yes, of course. Because uh, like, we've commented a lot over the past couple of days where like, there's like, six different classes in this you know, uh, best of five, which has happened quite often, but yeah, it's kind of cool that even with the very similar class choices, there's still very different decks already. Yep. It's like the two opposites of, of the, uh, or two sides of the coin for the mage, I guess. And then mm -hmm. the even variations mm -hmm. on Priest, which again, is like one we've commented on the how, how often Priest has been played. And then actually just seeing multiple variants as well. It's kind of cool, so. Yep. so. I'm really interested to see uh, if, uh, if, if history will, will repeat itself. After all, Orange did lose his previous match 3-0 against Druid, mm -hmm. and he d yet he decided to not ban Druid once again. And well, we'll see about that, uh, because it seems like a good opening hand for Crane with the one drop. He just needs the inner veil on one drop. Let's see who will get that, but I will keep it, uh, sorry, <laughs> I will keep the game for you guys and take it away. Thank you, Lothar. So, yep, it is going to be the Druid, as we can see Yogg in the hand there, versus the Tempo Mage. So, 
be an interesting choice early on as to there is two living roots available here for Crane, but do you actually want to live in roots turn one versus Temper Mage to try and stop the two drops or at least contest the two drops? Yeah, definitely. You have to um, put um, you have to deal with as much minion uh, with the minion aggression as early as possible um, because then there's only a limited amount of burst anyway, and then you can like get out of range with uh, of it uh, with Crane, for example, having the Feral Rage and also Moonblade Portal in his deck. Um, so yeah, as long as you ha handle the early aggression with the minions, don't let mana worms or cold sorcerers get out of control too much. You should be fine. You don't really need to keep the uh, all the burst cards for the Maligos. Yeah, you need to. Uh, I think in this matchup, you do need to worry about not dying yourself versus how you're actually going to kill your opponent. Yeah. So, we do see the living roots used instead of creating the one ones going to be used to just actually just kill off the uh, the. Cult there, there we see the babbling book. And this is actually a fun <laughs> <laughs> story uh, uh, um, f specifically for this matchup because Crane has been a vocal uh, um, vo vo has been very vocal against the babbling book. Uh, he said that babbling book, book just straight up sucks. But uh, of Here course, it is. of course, uh, every tempo mage player would uh, disagree with him. <laughs> yeah, and also, um, you know, uh, Asmodai actually got rank one uh, legend with his tempo mage that has babbling book uh, and the the tomes in as well. So, <coughs> excuse me. You know, um, Crane can actually be persuaded sometimes. He does like his more reliable yeah, cards. Mayb though. Maybe, maybe if Pebbling Book uh, takes a game against him, or or even or two, or maybe even yeah. three, then he might have been con uh, con <laughs> then he might have been convinced. Yeah, exactly. So, like you know, Crane took a while to stop playing Patron after you know everyone else sort of believed it wasn't that great, and but you know he fi finally did it. So maybe he will he will be turned by Orange's uh, Tempo Mage play with this Babbling Book. We'll see how useful it is. But if you are playing the slower list like the Antonidas, which I believe it is Orange's list, then you know you want the extra spells, you want the extra value, and it allows you to go for the late game, which is super important. Yeah, Orange does uh, in fact play um, the same, um, kind of the same list, if not even the exact same list that Asmodei piloted yep. uh, to number one legend recently. So uh, yeah, this can be pretty devastating and pretty devastating encounter. Yep, guess we are going to see coin into hero power here. The Flame Waker, too scary to actually leave up, and there was no. Uh, no easy way to deal with it. So the coin spent on the hero power. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's actually a, pr uh, a decent victory for Orange, even though the Flame Week is gone, having to use the coin on something like that. Now next turn's turn four, which for Druid is often just quite janky unless you've got Mikey, but... Yeah, it, it does feel bad to like Wrath uh, and use hero power for uh, coin for hero power in this situation, uh, but Crane does know uh, exactly what this matchup all comes down to, and he does respect the potential damage outcome uh, from the early minions. Yeah, and Forbidden Flame off the Babbling Book as well. So, but interesting card. You can proc the Flame Waker as well, but we've seen one already killed off. But also, it's kind of good for just having a one card answer to uh, the potential Arcane Giants yeah. as well. You know, it does use up a lot of your mana, but you just have a direct answer, yeah. if, if, you know, when it comes to late game. It, it synergizes uh, very well with Antonidas, mm -hmm. with Flame Wakers, and with spell damage, but also just as a really big removal for big stuff. It's, it's such a good versatile card, especially in this matchup. Yep. So, Hero Power gonna clear up the book. Done his job. He's always happy as well. Happy to see play. So, uh, Zior Drake seems like a pretty straightforward turn here. Everything else is either burn or removal. So, no need to think too much about this one. And there's the Yog as well. So, Golden Yog. I, I actually crafted Golden Yog. Yeah. I thought it would make it better. I thought I thought it would appreciate it appreciate it, it and make me actually get better Yogs. I'm, I'm being serious. It does make it better because every card that Yogg uh, casts <laughs> is golden as well. Yeah, exactly. Gotta go for the style points. But now Orange has a multitude of answers, and I think the the one arcane explosion confirms like you're right. You know, this is uh, exactly Asmodai's list. Yeah, the arcane explosion is actually a huge deal in tempo mage in general nowadays. You have five spell damage minions in the deck, and um, yeah, in the meta full of uh, uh, in the meta where like Zoo is a strong deck and Shaman, of course, mm -hmm. especially with the resurgence of mid uh, resurgence of midrange Shaman, who relies on having a big board, a spell damage arcane explosion is just w str straight up better than a uh, flame strike because it costs less. Yeah, I was going to say the uh, the cost of it is a big deal, right? Because even working it in with Flame Waker and, and, and other cards like that is actually huge. And I believe the deck does run Emperor as well, so you get even more <laughs> reduction, and then that has knock on effects with Antonidas. So this this version of Tempo Mage actually just all into twines and works together with almost every single card that's in the deck, which is exactly what you want. Yeah, now we see the Fandral Nourish. <laughs> Always oh, such a strong power play, <laughs> which allows you to even go further. Oh my god. So now the double Raven Idol. Ooh. 
you just go for the beast? The beast? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just such a big threat. It's like, a strong it requires minion. a fireball, right? Yeah, but it's uh, yeah. It's, it's do, you, do, you want to, do you want to give your opponent a three-three? I guess if you, ha it, it depends on which cards you have in your hand already. If you are uh, able to deal with the three-three that mm. spawns out of the beast with ease, then you might as well go. For I was it. just wondering, would would are you ever okay trading like a fireball ping for a three-three? It's like I probably would be a lot of the time. But he did, uh, yeah, he did go for the Flame Juggler as just uh, an easy minion to play, right? And just slot in and uh, kind of make it a little bit more awkward to deal with for Orange. And Orange has now drawn the Violence Portal, which is a pretty cool card. He can actually just use it right now on Fandral if he chooses to, as mm -hmm. I feel like he does need to remove it off the board. But he has other options for this Arcane Explosion, for example, yeah, to clear up all the 1-1s. One the Firelands Portal seems mm -hmm. um, like a solid place. Seven mana at, this, at your disposal. Firelands Portal costs seven, uh, and Fandral has five health, so why not do it? But... Uh, of course, there are the four trend, uh, the four saplings on the board, and um, those will most likely be able to deal with anything that uh, really yeah. pops out of this Firelands portal. So therefore, Arcane Explosion has to be played in this situation, and we might see, yeah, we will see Frostbolt plus Hero Power, I would assume, because Forbidden Flame is much more valuable, especially for those um, Arcane Giants, which exactly. uh, will come out later eventually. Yeah, and, and this would normally not feel too great for Orange because you're not developing any minions yourself, and you, you're clearing up like annoying minions, right? You know, 4 one ones aren't exactly the biggest threat, but as you said, could punish the portal a little bit. But because he does have Yogg, even just casting so many spells is going to help him out in the next few turns if he feels the need to just drop Yogg before anything else. That's if right. the Druid runs away too much, and it looks like Crane is going for the uh, the big play here, just going as wide as possible on the board, and uh, just telling the mage, like, hey, you know, what are you going to do about it? And Orange Orange is actually two turns away from being able to even play Yogg at the moment for that big board clear you kind of play it for. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure. I have the I have the lists right here, and uh, I don't think that um, the mage list actually has flame strike in it. Does it? I don't mm. recall, but I haven't actually tested this list yet. What? I've seen it a couple of times, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just, I just checked. It, it, does, it, it does not have flame strike ah. in it. So uh, arcane explosion is the only AOE card. Yep. The others you will ha you would have to get off of babbling book mm. or Kabbalah stone. So uh, which yeah. is why Crane went so wide like exactly. that, right? Exactly. The he players know each other's deck lists after all, uh, all of them, which is um, why they make those picks and bans, especially, and also like why they play how they play. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the Rhino did come off the Violence Portal, so a little bit of extra value for the initial trade, but also there's not really any beasts in this deck, so the Rhino isn't going to get you know insane value going forward. It's probably going to die anyway, but you know, killing one minion and being able to trade and have a 2-3 left on the board, pretty reasonable for 7 mana. Yeah, and um, of course Orange of, uh, also gets closer and closer to his Yogg mana, and uh, Crane uh, has no way of like pre uh, he's no way of preemptively pun uh, playing around it because he doesn't apply any pressure here. Look at this. This is now the first damage that Crane dealt mm -hmm. to Orange, and yeah, sure, there's a lot of stuff on the board right now, but is this where we just see Mana Worm Forbidden Flame? Uh, we might even not see like we might yeah. not even see mana worm at yeah, all. Yeah, I suppose Just there's no point. Keep it for after the yog. Yeah, I think Just you do because especially with the yog, there are a lot of AOEs that you know twisting nether doom that actually just you know clear the board. There can be shadow flames as well, which really help out. But most of the AOEs you're looking at do not do eight damage. So actually, just using forbidden flame this turn gives yog an extra spell and also just make makes the yog much more likely to clear the board going yeah. forward. All that all that mana worm would do in this situation, if you played it before Forbidden Flame, um, is. Prevent three damage. So basically, one mana, th a heal three. It's yeah. not really what you want to do, do with the mana worm, especially like are you sure it will kill a minion maybe, but um, mm. Yogg-Saron does the same job. Yeah. So with the, I was gonna say like Orange playing the Cult Sorcerer here. You're gonna go for the Fireball. Okay. So the the spell power from the Cult Sorcerer negates the Forbidden Flame only being seven mana, but now this is just. Yeah, I this feels worse than the the, the mana worm play. Yeah, I do not agree with this play because the mana worm would have uh, soaked up three damage even, and cold sorcerer only soaks up two. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's in that regard even worse. I mean, I, uh, there's no way that orange does not play Yogg next turn. So I don't see why uh, not. I, I don't see the reason to keep uh, mm. to not keep the oh. cold sorcerer in the situation. Second giant. Wow. 
Okay, so now there's a lot of damage coming out for Crane here and really pressuring Orange. And, you know, we've seen it a few times uh, so far this weekend, but Orange is going to have to rely on Yogg to pull this one out of the bag oh. or at least even it up. Let's see if uh, Orange is the guy who takes his vitamins and uh, says his prayers. <laughs> Well, it's golden, so there's <laughs> there's a start at least. He has got golden yog, so let's see what happens. As there are, there's been a decent sum of spells cast from yog, but I don't think there's been too many. That's a right? good one. That's a good one. Okay, That's a good one. He needs to clear off the arcane giant though. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Mulch. Oh, where's mulch going? This is huge. On to his own yog. Okay. <laughs> And that's oh. it. It's going to leave eight damage up, and that's not enough with only nine health and a guaranteed hero power from the Druid here. Crane's going to take the first game, and it what, it was whilst being on the receiving end of a Yogg, yeah. not that the other way around. That is the problem with um, that I personally have as well with a Yogg and Tempo Mage nowadays. Um, for example, I didn't even bring it in my Tempo Mage mm -hmm. because of the issue that the Mage unlike the druid, does not really cast that many spells anymore. In order to like ha cast a lot of spells to make Yorg uh, guaranteed um, as good as in druid, we have to play um, Coverless Tome, basically, right? Yeah. Uh, because it c provides you with so many spells uh, to play. But when you're forced to play Yorg on, uh, right on turn 10, um, it's uh, very unlikely that you cast enough spells for it to be good. Yeah, because you need to, uh, a lot of the time, and the one of the main differences between that and Druid is, a lot of the time you use spells to ramp up into a Yogg, so you yeah. the spells are almost always guaranteed, right? Whereas, as you said, with uh, Tempo Mage, you can struggle a little bit, but Crane is going to be 1-0 up with this Druid, and we've seen Druid probably be the most successful deck, or class at least, of this tournament so far, and it is going to go up against Orange's Priest, and we see Forbidden Shaping, Double uh, Shadow Words there, Death and Pain available. So I imagine most of this is going to go away. It's probably not to. Uh, don't think you would really ever keep Pain versus Druid. Like, yeah, well, you know, Innovate Fandral. First of okay, all, fine, first, but first of all, you don't want to keep any of those cards because you are a dragon. Uh, oh, dra yeah, sorry. Dragon is Orange priest? is playing the Dragon Priest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. I got them confused. I thought uh, it's, it's Crane that's playing the control, right? Yeah. Yeah, and therefore you want to have that uh, solid uh, Dragon Curve. But yeah, it seems um, that unlike the Dragon Priest that uh, G2 piloted, uh, it's a little bit more of um, a, yeah, it's a little bit more of a controlling Dragon Priest, as we can see by the card choices. Like Darkshire Alchemist is a card you typically don't see mm -hmm. in that kind of deck. Is this already hinting that there can be a Arcanine Soul Priest then? Because normally a lot of the time, if you're going to play the Alchemist, you kind of want the flexibility that uh, Soul Priest gives as well. I don't know. But it doesn't I really fit in dragons, yeah, does it? Yeah, I, I doubt it. I doubt that there's an organized soul priest because you don't really have... Um, you cannot really go for the uh, game plan where you just wipe the board with circle of healing. Yeah, because uh, your game plan is you have minions on exactly. the board, right? <laughs> okay, this is definitely interesting. So the Zarkshire Zark Icon, is, I would assume, is just there to either like heal yourself against aggressive decks or heal your minions to have better, mm -hmm. to have better um, board control. Yep, seems completely reasonable. Just like Crane's opening hand, he can wild growth on two. He does have the innovate available to him as well, and he still has hold of the coin. So he's got the ramp side of it. Maybe not too many options as per yet, because you've got to imagine that the arcane giants are more likely wow, just going to die. Look at that. that is a pretty good forbidden shaping. Yeah, that is the absolute best forbidden shaping you could ever ask for. That's, there's absolutely no better minion to get out of uh, for three mana. Yeah, I was going to say, like, don't say just no better minion you'll ever get because there are many other mana turns you can go. But on three, that is actually insane. And maybe even one of the most impactful turns to get that, right? Obviously, you can't get Blade Master on any other turn, but yeah, the, so different, the, the, the power of Blade Master as a 4 7 on turn three is kind of huge. Sure, you could argue that King Wukla, for example, is sometimes better because of five attack instead of four, but. 4-7 on in this stage of the game is just so hard to deal with for the druid. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see that... He's going to commit. He has to put, commit so much to it. Four cards total. But That's of course, crazy. Crane does not really mind that because all uh, that does is also... Um, yeah, make, arc uh, make the Arcane Giant cheaper. He actually is able to play it next turn along with the coin. Yeah, but the, I think the, the slight worry for Crane is that... If he whiffs the next draw, then Coin Arcane Giant can easily. We can see, obviously, it's going to be dealt with, but versus Priest, you never feel confident of, like, you know, a turn five or even six. 
a giant, especially now there's a taunt down because you know the cards like Entomb, Shadow of Death. There's there's multiple options yeah. that can just instantly remove this giant from play, and then you're so far behind because look at the rest of his hand. Moonfire is pretty much the uh, yeah, one he, of the whiffs I was talking about. It's a card that almost does nothing this turn. Crane pretty much has to go for yeah, the giant. It's, here. No it's not like you can wait to play it because eventually Priest is going to have the solution for it anyway. The longer you wait, so you got to play it out early. And yeah, hope he doesn't have the Shadow of Death. But unfortunately for Crane, we see Sh Orange does not have one, but two Shadow of Deaths even. Yeah, it's got, he's got a removal for days on any big minions. A second powered shield. I mean, why not at this point? Um, the Druid normally doesn't run mulch unless he gets it from Raven Idol. So this extra health is actually going to be very, very useful. Just a 310. It's kind of scary to actually deal with. So, oh, Crane onto Wild Growth. Not really going to help him. Really needed more like a Nourish or just any minion to play <laughs> at all this turn because now just Wild Growth pass does push him to 8 mana next turn. But like, what's he going to do with 8 mana when he's just got Living Roots move, <laughs> Fire <laughs> Swipe? Yeah, like, he definitely needs to uh, draw a Nourish any <laughs> very soon. Yeah, and all the while Orange is actually doing the, the Dragon style. Oh my god. Okay, Innovate is, again, <laughs> not what Crane needs. He can kill off the Azure Drake, but Orange has just got you know, plenty more you know, fuel in the tank here. He has more Drakens, he can just drop another Guardian if he wants. Or after the uh, swipe, actually, he can just go for the Azure Drake. Oh my god, the Bran. It's going to be so sick. Yeah, why not? Just in the, now because of the Bran, I think Twilight Guardian just feels better because you get the buff. Yeah, so many so many good battle cries in Orange's hand already for the uh, for the Bran. Not just the Twilight Guy, but also Ezodrake and Darkshire Alchemist. Yeah, and especially because because the health is so high on the middle Twilight Guardian, yeah. the double heal from the Alchemist on the minion might actually you know do something because normally a heal for ten on a minion is is quite ineffective. Yeah. But this minion's got ten health, so. But there we go. Crane finally uh, drawing what he needed to draw, his draw engine, in form of gadgets and auctioneer. And now he's trying to go crazy with card draw. Is it too late, though? Well, look, at, look at the board state for Orange, and he's still got plenty of cards available to him. Sure, the board state uh, right now as we see it is, is pretty threatening, but uh, Crane's still at 20 health. Um, Priest doesn't really is not really known for bursting that yeah. much, at least the Dragon Priest. So, um, Okay, Rat's a really yeah. good pickup as well. It means he can double cycle if he chooses to. Which does, I mean, Wrath for 3 doesn't really do anything, right? So you just may as well cycle. True. I don't know, like if, if the Moonfire went on the Bran, <laughs> then he actually could have, in, hindsi yeah, in yeah. hindsight, he could have uh, Wrath the Bran away. Yeah, everything changes if you know what your next card's going to be. But now, I mean, Orange can pretty much just do whatever he wants at this point. You can as your Drake for the double draw feels quite nice while the brand is available. And he even has the 4 4 to uh, trade with the Gadget Zone because of the brand. If not, that would have been a little yeah. bit awkward for him as well. Yeah. 4 is obviously, and for the longest time, been known as the uh, an annoying uh, attack toll for Priest to deal with. Yeah, that is such a smooth play here by Orange, drawing two cards and dealing with pretty much everything on the board. And who cares about losing one Twilight Guardian when the other one's a 3 9? It's kind of ridiculous, and the Decide brand's still alive as well. Decides to ignore the one ones. After all, um, Orange does know that there's nothing like a power of the wild uh, or an, uh, that, buffs, that, that, buffs, that, buffs, that buffs the minions in Crane's deck. So unless it comes off of Raven Idol, mm -hmm. which you're never going to play around unless it's like it's going to kill you, right? You know, you, there's no point playing around what may or may not come out of a Raven Idol. Yeah, Speaking definitely. of which. Also, you have to consider a lot of those uh, burst cards for the Maligos, the Moonfire and the Living Roots mm -hmm. did come out already just to draw cards uh, for the Gadgets, for example. And now how does he finish? Uh, 30 Health Priest. That is also another issue. There is one card. You can't. No, don't, don't, say, don't say it, Rave. <laughs> don't say it. So, <laughs> so now we, have, we do have the Fandral into the Raven Idol, which is just a pure value play. And to make Orange have to deal with this Fandral at some point, unless he can actually just kill him. Just snap pick the Druid of the Claw, easily the best minion out of the choices, and then goes for the swipe as well. But there is still the 3-9 on the board, and there is just still no good way of getting through that taunt. It's kind of incredible, actually. Yeah, that is indeed incredible. It's so hard to for, for Druids in general to deal Pretty with high health minions. Pretty much needs to be Maliga's swipe yeah. <laughs> to be able to deal with this. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, when you don't run multi, you rely on either big spell damage from Maligos or Yogg-Saron mm -hmm. uh, to deal with big board states. 
So now there's the actual option of like a hell of a lot of draw this turn. Go into double cleric, heal the 3 9, or trade if he wants and heal the 3 9, whatever. Um, and then he can just shadow word pain the, the Fandral and then just carry on with the damage. He still has five mana after the it's heal so on the Twilight Guardian if he chooses to play both. And I like so this, you know. <laughs> your hand is only going to get progressively more ridiculous and powerful if you do this play. And there's no reason not to. You've got a very easy answer for Fandral. Well, there is that, uh, technically there is a reason not to go like full Northshire sometimes, right? <laughs> well, uh, not in this scenario. Not in this scenario. Would yeah. you, why, what's, the, what's the argument Imag against going full Northshire? Like imagine, imagine there was to be a Yogg-Saron and then Yogg-Saron cast like, oh yeah, uh, Maelstrom portal into circle of healing into whatever <laughs> and it's like oh yeah I'm just gonna <laughs> draw my entire deck oh oops I guess I lose true but unless Yogg also clears the board and unless you literally fatigue from 30 to death in the Yogg turn which would be impressive uh, the minions will just clear it up anyway as now Crane is only on six health and there's not a lot you can do about this board that Twilight Guardian just an absolute terror at 310 yeah, Origin full control here, and I don't see any way for Crane to actually get back in this game. So, realistically, the idea for Crane at this point will be to try and get to Yogg and survive yeah. to get to Yogg. So, do you feel like, as your Drake, see what comes out, worst case scenario, play Druid of the Claw? Is that going to be enough? Three, four, five. The Priest would have to do one damage. Maybe you can innovate hero power as well to make it less likely, or does swipe work out a little bit better? Here? I would have, I would have liked a druid of the claw into swipe here actually, and just hope that Yok arrives, Yok arrives on the next draw. But I guess yeah, this is fine too. I guess. Yeah, and this is actually just going to be game regardless. Yeah, as because there, there is, is the corruptor. In the yeah. Round for orange, and he does even it up with this priest. Two health left over is not definitely not enough. There might be Holy Nova and Corruptor and whatnot, mm. and it's like just not enough to survive against the Dragon Priest. Yeah, and also, you know, with the size of Orange's hand as well, unless Yogg was coming out pretty much the next turn, then it's very difficult to deal with anyway. This Twilight Guardian will just, you know, chip him down over the course of a turn or two regardless. So Orange does even it up with Priest, and uh, the Reign of Terror from the Druids will not continue. And a uh, pretty rough one for Crane overall, I feel like, because Orange got such a, a good start, especially with the, the Guardian, of course, into the double-powered shield, I think, was the key. Uh, it meant that just Orange just couldn't... Uh, sorry, Crane couldn't really just get back into the game with the Druid then. Yeah, the Dragon dr the dragon Priest minions are so hard to deal with at times. Uh, and <laughs> when they accumulate on the board like that, when, when it's like one minion after another minion after another minion, eventually the Druid runs out of answers and, yeah. It's, uh, the Dragon Priest just overwhelms the Druid. Yep. But now we are going to see the Priest versus Crane's Freeze Mage as these guys are 1-1. One, one. And this game will be the one that, that gets one of these plays ahead. And, you know, what do you feel about this matchup? Freeze Mage versus Priest, he can't. <laughs> well, I mean, the Priest uh, Mage definitely has a very good matchup here in this scenario. Um, not only because it deals with those... Um, minions with ease pretty much, right? You can just freeze the board states and there's nothing that Priest uh, can do about it. And sure, yeah, like Doomsayer can be handled by uh, Shadowward Pains, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but yeah, it's just the problem that uh, Priest th doesn't doesn't pressure enough uh, like compared to other aggressive decks that yeah. um, just punish Priest Mage. Yeah, to be fair though, Orange has a pretty reasonable start. He's got a very fast start considering the, the deck he's playing. Uh, so he can curve out pretty well. This Doomsday is going to be very frustrating, of course. But also, Orange is running the Alchemist, or at least one we, we've seen. So there is a chance for some additional heals. But I'm with you. I think <laughs> even with all that and everything sort of half going Orange's way, it's uh, not going to be enough, especially when, yeah. you know, it's Crane Pilot and the Freeze Mage. This guy knows how to play this deck yeah. pretty well. And yeah, yeah, like you said, the lack of healing is also another big factor. Usually, like when other pr kinds of priests uh, play against Freeze Mage, after the Lakstraza like, turn, they usually don't have that many problems healing back up mm -hmm. to um, mitigate the incoming burst. But uh, yeah, Dragon Priest does not have the luxury that luxury. There's only the Darkshire Alchemist, as you said, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, speaking of which, just going to Orange's hand and now. 
The frustration is the priest of being a minion behind. Now, you know, it is only a loot hoarder, so it's not the end of the world, but just having a, not having that advantage of just going out, the initiative, should I say, of just getting the mil minions and being able to build them up, because that's the only hope he's got of yeah. just, like, really pressuring Cranes somehow. But we see Cranes got a lot of options. Blizzard, very powerful card versus uh, such a minion-heavy deck like this. I think the way Orange wins this is if he just has a... Uh, Constant, uh, constantly good curve, just plays a very strong minion on every turn, and uh, Crane just either whips on card draw mm -hmm. to get him the uh, to get him the option that he options that he needs, uh, or just completely whips on uh, freeze effects. Yeah, I think that's um, that describes the state of, of this matchup quite well. Like for Orange to win, things need to go well for him and not good for Crane. It's not like yeah, you know, stuff just has to go my way and I'll get it. It's like no, things have to go pretty bad for Crane yeah. to be able to lose this matchup. But you know, we've uh, we've seen you know matchups. Who's like back in the day? We've seen freeze mages beat control warriors before. So you know, th there's a chance. Yeah, but it's, it's, just, it's just always favored. there's always a chance. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, definitely not a given. And uh, Orange does has a reasonably sized hand with a lot of chunky minions that aren't too easy to deal with. But again, we see Crane with double Blizzard, so he has quite a good. Uh, Good a couple of stall effects there. I like this play right here. Black and Corruptor representing the most damage per turn in the, in the upcoming turns, so uh, that's the best minion to pressure Crane with. Yeah, and also you get the tempo of actually just removing the, the minion on their side as well. Get rid of the loot hoarder, but it's going to be cleared up pretty easily with the Forgotten Torch, and that is going to cycle a three mana, six damage Roaring Torch into Crane's deck for later on. Yeah, most likely we will see uh, in this scenario the North Shark Cleric along with the Twilight Guardian. The Twilight Whelp should be kept in hand um, to enable the Bookworm and also some other dragon synergies later on. Yeah, known by a lot of players as the the battery when you have it in a lot of matchups. The Whelp, just because it's quite low value at this point in the game, you just hold it there, as you said, and know that all your dragon effects will be activated going forward. Yeah, and the Bookworm is actually um, <coughs> can actually be pretty impactful, uh, not only like handling uh, Doomsayers, but also Acolytes. Yeah, re reducing down card draw, because the Bookworm doesn't deal any damage. It just instantly uh, destroys a uh, minion of three attack or less. And uh, yeah, just as you said, just removing the potential card draw from the mage is huge. And I just love Bookworm as a card anyway. I think it's got a great name <laughs> and <laughs> great artwork. <laughs> so I'm a huge fan of this card. And it's the nice, awesome and the nice voice line as well. Yeah. What does it say, you can't? I, I never really quite understand what it says. Something like reading dragons or whatever. You just <laughs> like, like the accent. Yeah, I, I, li I like it. <laughs> so when Wrist Agent is card draw this time for Orange, and why not at this point? You, like you said, because Bookworm has multiple good targets left against the Freeze Mage, there's no reason to just dump it on the board. Uh, yeah, another Freeze effect from Crane with two Frost Novas, two Blizzards. Draws into the ice block. I imagine is this the turn for Frost Nova, or do you think you're just going to lock in the you ice can, block? You can just wait as you can just wait as uh, so as long as six damage, pretty right? much as long as you want, right? Until yeah. the board becomes actually threatening to your health, then uh, you might as well like if if the board gets threatened, is threatening to kill you in t uh, in two turns, mm -hmm. pretty much, right? Yeah, that's when you need to start yeah, putting uh, putting on the brakes. Yeah. Okay, Powered Shield looks like uh, the go-to option here. All his minions are on full health, so the Alchemist's not going to get much work done, and you're more than likely going to save it for the Alex Strauss turn anyway. And uh, Orange will, or kind of does just need to cycle into something. I guess a card that could really help him in this match is uh, Ysera. If you can get Ysera down on, on turn 9 as early as possible, then maybe this, the, Ysera, the Dream cards even are actually going to you know, give him a chance to just burst through. Yeah, that is a very like good Nightmares point. or, you know, uh, what's the other one? Ysera Awakens, you know, for the extra burst damage. That is a very good point, because especially, especially because Crane um, can never know for sure how much burst there is after um, yeah, very a couple, of, to play a couple around, of dream yeah. cards, right? And and Ysera acts in a very similar way uh, as, a, as a body that Manly Ghost does when we've cast all the Druid versus Freeze Mage, and the Freeze Mage just can't really kill him. Um, on 12 health, of course. It, it, it can happen, but it's very difficult and requires a hell of a commitment from the Freeze Mage. All right. Well, he has one more turn to draw it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's super awkward as well because, you know, obviously Crane purposely not damaging any of the minions yet because, you know, heals when the clerics on board can start yeah. to cause some issues. Yeah, because Orange doesn't care about the game. Orange cannot let the game go long because he will lose. So Orange needs to have this game go as quickly as possible. We see the Bookworm get played now for just more board presence and as much pressure as possible. I think this is the turn where Crane is going to start freezing. Yeah. 
But if you take a look, like a look at Crane's hand, he just doesn't pick up any card draw, like any significant card draw, really. No, no Acolytes or Arcane Intellects mm. have been drawn yet thus far. He can stall the game out for a long time. This is very similar to a match like, uh, game I cast earlier, I think, with Lothar. Um, I think it was Crane versus JJ earlier on, where Crane didn't have the answers to end the game, but he just had all the freeze, which just naturally bought him mm. time. You know, instead of having the card draw to... Uh, Increase the cycle speed. He instead just throws the board out for like five turns. <laughs> it's like okay. Okay, so there's the heal, but the cleric is gone. So it's not going to be any card draw for orange just yet, and a pretty dead turn. I imagine we're going to see another freeze effect now, because why not? Yeah, after all, this board is threatening to kill you in two turns. Mm -hmm. So you, this, this is the point where you have to freeze pretty much every turn. Also pretty important that Crane, as well as uh, having a quite a strong lack of cycle, as you mentioned, and uh, not having Alexstrasza yet. So he can't really, you know, until he gets there and draws it, you can't really plan uh, yeah. around it, because the it could be the last card in your deck and you need another way to win. The thing about Alexstrasza when you play against Priests generally is you should have the burst in your hand already. You can't just jam out Alexstrasza on turn 9 and yeah. hoping that you, like, eventually kill him because most likely of course, <laughs> he's yeah, going to heal back up. And but I feel like when you have it in hand, you can yeah. plan for that, right? As opposed to when you don't have it, well, you might not draw it till the last card, which then you're going to see some problems. You need to, you need like a backup plan versus the priest, that's all. Just in case, as Orange is doing a pretty good job of piling on a lot of pressure and the freezes are going to slow him down. I'm pretty sure that's the best... Um, like if no matter what, how much uh, healing the priest has in his deck, right? Uh, if you don't know how much priest, uh, how much healing the priest has, then the best plan to play Alexstrasza is right before your um, first block gets popped, mm -hmm. right? Because then you can um, set up a second, uh, set up a second block after 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 that, and then um, throw a bunch of burst at your opponent, and, and then, then finish off uh, finish him off with the rest of the burst after the second C block. Completely right. I think you need the the safe turn to be able to play Alex Strauss and know you're not going to die at all and that is obviously before your first block gets propped and we do see Alex Strauss after talking about her just uh, popping into the hand there so now Crane at least knows he has uh, the dragon available yeah, and can burn them down to 15 but he has nothing else yeah. does draw into fireball though so he's starting to piece it together yeah. and he does have a, at least he's got one torch in the deck right one roaring torch mm -hmm. and there's the ice lances as well mm -hmm. those, those are going to be important draws still yeah with the frost bolts already there as activators anyway is this worth a Shadow Word Pain? Oh yeah, definitely. If the Doomsayer uh, was uh, in hand there, he would have played it. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason and to keep the Shadow Word Pain. And you've seen three freeze effects now, so yeah. the, you know, the, there isn't that many left in the deck. And you know, you might presume the fourth isn't actually in hand. There's the Roaring Torch as well. Wow. Well, there's a lot of burst now, and this might already prompt Crane into playing the Alexstrasza right now. Considering that Orange will most likely not have much burst heal, there is the Darkshire Alchemist. Are there like two Darkshire Alchemists in the deck list? Let me check really quick. Okay, but yeah, you're completely right. With the Fireball into Roaring Torch, it means that there's definitely a uh, def definitely good options now. As it becomes more and more likely, Crane is going to draw into either another Fireball, some Ice Lances in the next following turns as well. Crane will just be going through every single option, weighing up how many cards he's got left and whether he needs to, or, or you know, how soon he feels he needs to play the Alexstrasza. But he's going with the freeze this turn. Uh, how many alchemists are in the deck? Uh, I actually didn't, uh, don't have the deck list available oh, to me, can't. unfortunately. Yeah, some uh, of those deck lists Well, I would be surprised if there were there. two, to be honest, because there needs to be space somewhere, right? This, this yeah. is a dragon deck. You need the dragon synergy. We've seen two bookworms. We've even seen a forbidden shape in. So yeah. uh, if so there's two alchemists, it's like, well, well, what are you actually cutting in this deck? All right, so dream scenario right here. What do you uh, think is the best minion to get against Freeze Rag? Rag. I think Rag's the best, hence the yeah. hero power. I think the eight drop forbidden shape in's better overall. Um, so yeah, we did see it happen. And now Arcane Intellect available. Oh, Crane it does decide to turn up the heat, though. Alex Strauss is going to bring Orange down to 15, and this is the problem, what you were talking about. Second Alchemist, okay. Yeah, and that is actually a big deal as well with the Brown Bronze Beard. Yeah, because if, if you, you can Brown Alchemist heal this turn, and then... You heal a total of 12, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> which is almost back to full. And then also, the, 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 the cool thing here is that... Brand being on the board, as well as the, s the size and scope of this board, it's very difficult for Crane to want to kill Bran, on you know, w without a, you know, a card like a Flame Strike. So then, if he commits to trying to kill Bran, everything else lives. But if Bran survives, he can Alchemist and heal again the following turn. 
Yeah, think it's also funny to see that uh, actually thanks to that, um, that mirror image, Orange was not able to proc the ice block here. And of course he also has to suicide one of his minions at least mm -hmm. into Alexstrasza in order to be able to go for the Bran Darkshire combination. Yep, is able to get Crane extremely low though, so not a guaranteed block proc next turn, but also I think we've seen all the freeze effects minus Frostbolt's Nice Lances, all the AoE freeze mm -hmm. used now, two Frost Novas, two Blizzards. So, you know, I'm just going to feel also pretty confident. No reason to handle the Alexstrasza because there's no way Crane can burst it's through three taunts, all those yeah. taunters. How much trouble do you think Crane's in? He does have Ice Barrier and he can start stacking up the burn. Obviously, we can see that there's a hell of a lot of healing left in, yeah. in, the, in the tank for Orange, but... It was very important for Crane that the b block didn't get proc because it just gives him an extra turn to get even more burst into his hand. To eventually, but he's gonna start have to he's gonna have to start throwing burst into uh, Orange's face uh, yeah. as probably this turn already. Yeah, well, the, the, the ice barrier is like insignificant uh, against this board, right? It yeah, doesn't definitely. really do anything. So you need to start stacking the burn in. He's gonna use the Forgotten Torch this turn to give him a at least a chance of drawing the Roaring Torch next turn as well. So. Let's see what happens now. There is a Shadow of Death, but I'm pretty sure that Orange will want to trade at least one minion into this Alexstrasza first to open up the second Alchemist. Yeah, go it's pretty much for Casually go back up to, well, 30, because he can use his heal as well. Yeah, he, he needs to, like, even probably um, suicide mm. two minions into the Alexstrasza here. Um, just, yeah, just so he has more board space, because or Crane will just ignore this board from now on. Yeah, I mean, like, well, the, the only... Um, the only one of he could sack in if he wanted Alex Straza to die at least would be uh be the seven nine. Oh which wouldn't even die. So yeah. Be interesting to see if he does trade in. I wouldn't even mind the three four Twilight Guardian going in as well. Because you you've got the damage, right? And you've seen all the freeze effects. Yeah. So you you know, you don't you don't need that much damage because there's not what seven ice lances available anyway. Ooh, it's oh, I do I do not like it. the Shadow Word Death. Yeah, I like this way more. Mm -hmm. I agree. Especially when you have Azure Drake. Which is with Bran, which is even more cycle. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I did not expect this going into this matchup. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's pretty much it pretty much happened what Orange wanted to happen, right? Crane did draw very few card draw cards, mm -hmm. and this is what pretty much uh, allowed Orange to have the time to uh, amass this uh, board. Uh, sure, Crane was able to freeze it for a there very long time, but eventually. He just runs out of freezes and then he doesn't have the burst cards necessary and Orange was able to heal himself as well so for so much with this brand Dark yeah, Alchemist. The, the, the brand just wasn't going to die there as it just would have required too much attention plus all the other minions that would threaten him anyway. But I think that just shows the power of the dragon minions as well. They're so big, the freeze mage can't just clear them up easily at all and there are probably barely any minions actually killed by Crane yeah. that, that game because the board was so big. It was mainly Orange trading away anyway. So we are going to get into the next match. Orange is 2-1 up versus Crane, and we're going to see what we've all been waiting for, the Priest Mirror. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, eventually it had to happen, I suppose. And uh, But it is, <coughs> excuse me, it is Dragon versus Control, though. Yeah, so this will be definitely be a very interesting matchup. Who do you think is favored? Hmm. I feel like the Dragon... Priest is going to do better out of this because there are so many annoying minions for the control priest to try and deal with. Um, I've not looked at Crane's control priest list too in depth, so you know I couldn't tell you every single card that's in there. But I feel like Orange's list is going to be genuinely more powerful because look, you know, you look at cards like Excavated Evil. What's three three damage AOE going to do to to a Dragon Priest board? Not a lot. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, sure, there can already uh, there can be some scenarios though where Crane uh, can punish Orange pretty hard, especially considering that he has double Cabal Shadow Priest mm -hmm. in his deck as well. Uh, if that ever steals a Bran or like even even the Northshire Cleric or Rumorous Agent are such good card uh, such good targets for it. And then of course the Sylvanas is also such a big threat against the Dragon Priest. Yeah, and also I, you know, there's more than likely going to be entombed, right? So if the Sarah comes out and gets entombed, and the game does go late, then Crane could swing it back that way. But we'll see how we progress here. There is, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a coin Twilight Guardian, or even coin Forbidden Shape, maybe. But why would you coin out? Would wouldn't you rather like? 
Because uh. I feel like you want to do, you want to be proactive as the dragon priest, yeah, right? Yeah, I feel like true. you want to do something, and there's like two four drop potentials, and the guardian's gonna have, um, gonna be buffed by the the dragons, of course. And then you follow up, you have double as your Drake to go five and six. That's true. But uh, orange preserving the coin, it might even get to the point where orange expects to have the coin available for the Isera. Like if he's yeah. planning on playing Isera on turn eight because Isera is one of those minions which Crane will have a lot of troubles dealing with. Okay, so th so this is this is the other route as well. You know, if you just go for the double as your Drake, then we know that they're a pain to deal with. Of in course, general. that, is, that so is also the case. Yeah, you cycle, put two four fours on the board, and say, yeah, enjoy. There's, <laughs> there's plenty of solutions against three health minions, uh, against three attack minions. Mm -hmm. Shadow Pain, of course, the most prominent one. But uh, yeah, four attack minions, not so much. So is that will be very painful to deal with. Yeah, Crane, of course, does have um, Organized Hope Priest mm -hmm. with the Circle of Healing. That is like the best solution against those four fours. Yeah, is this the point where... Oh, interesting. Okay. So he's going to play the four five. Just throw away the, the healing potential for actually just the board presence to try and get a positive trade on the Azure Drake. I don't, uh, don't mind that at all. Yeah, I mean, naturally... <laughs> Orange and just as well has issues dealing with <laughs> four yeah, attack well, minions. Well, well that's himself, the big difference so. between like a, a quick glance. The Harrison might look like the better play because the Harrison's pointless in this matchup in terms of its battle cry, but it dies to Shadow of Death. That's right. So you know, and and then suddenly Shadow of Death plus another minion means you start to lose that board. Whereas the Alchemist more directly challenges the Azure Drake, and much more difficult as you said to deal with by Orange. Yeah, and in the mirror matchup. Even <laughs> it's it's kind of like with the uh, in the priest mirror it's kind of like with the zoo mirror. Uh, the more minions you leave alive, the more the um, the more the priest will snowball just by healing yeah. them, those minions up. And yeah, it's, it just has to just have to deal with all the minions at all times. Yeah, I feel like um, it, you know, it, it's slightly different because it's not a true mirror because it's dragons versus control. But I feel like whoever sort of missteps for one turn is really going to start to feel the pain, and you know the the opponent's going to snowball yeah, even, out of it. Even though the decks are very different, uh, the fundamental dynamics of the priest class are still yeah. in place. Exactly. And uh, okay, so soul priest is drawn, but we're not seeing the circle that would be actually pretty nice. Versus this board, Shadow of Pain going to help tidy up though. He's even going to be able to heal back. Okay, he's just going to do a normal heal to, to stay safe versus the Twilight World. Could have gone for the Flash Heal if you wanted to just go all the way back up and say, look, you know, I've got a 4-5 again that's yeah, awkward to deal with, but, but Flash Heal can get some use with Soul Priest later. Of course, the Flash Heal is so valuable with so in combination with Soul flash Priest. Heal as well. That burn. Deals with any kind of big dragon that can eventually come, on, come down on the board. Even Isera. Like you just organize soul, uh, you, your opponent plays Isera and just play organize soul priest and double flash your hero power it. Mm. Worst case scenario, Done. right? Done. Yeah. Okay, but Blackwing technician looks like a decent option here. I mean, do do you actually just win wrist and Blackwing and throw it out there? Because the the, the problem with playing around cards like uh, Cabal is that. If, if you always play around it, then you're never going to play certain minions in your deck, right? And then, it, you know, there's a chance it could just not be drawn. And then you can go from there and... Oh. Well, a way to play around it, though, is uh, you can just play all those two attack minions in one turn. Yeah, true. And then Cabal, can o he can only play one Cabal per turn, so... <laughs> yeah, do you have that option? There are that many two attack minions in the Dragon Priest, though, you know, to, to like make that kind of play. There's only really, what, the Twilight Whelps and the Wimrists? And Bran. Oh, that's true, actually. And the black do, and do you do you ever want to play Bran and say into what you expect a Cabal turn though? That would, that could be very scary. Northshire cleric would be another one. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of targets for it, but yeah, it, we'll have to see how how Orange will navigate this. Yeah, On the other hand, now draw a flash heal. Yep. Yeah, flash heal hero power, very so clean. strong to clean this. Yeah, gains a three three as well as well as having a four three on the board. So. See now, Crane actually starting to build a board of his own now. A little bit weak to a, uh, to a excavated evil, but I don't think the Dragon Priest is running that card, right? Yeah, I, uh, like uh, like uh, the same principle as with the uh, organized circle not being run in Dragon Priest. Yeah. It, it hurts your own board, and that's not what you want. So generally, the uh, only AOE that you see usually in the Priest deck is a Holy Nova, or like we Chill see in this case, <laughs> a Chill more. Team off the top. No, okay. <laughs> That would have been insane. If it's just an Entomb, remove it and then just carry on. That might have even sealed the deal there. 
Hmm. Yeah, but uh, another option. So another Sylvanas? option. Yeah, another option yeah. would be Sylvanas Flash Heal in the situation. I like it. And I actually. think this is exactly what Crane's going for. Because you situation. don't run dragons, so it's gonna guard your board and <laughs> yeah. not wipe them. So this is actually pretty crazy. And you can continue to push damage. Oh, okay, this is a huge turn actually. Yeah, it's incredible for sure. And yeah, Orange now in trouble. In very <laughs> deep trouble. There is the Isera, but of course. With not having the initiative on the board, not having the not having anything on the board, and Crane having five minions, that is is not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. There is Shadow of Death and Shadow of Pain to deal with the Soul Priest and the Chillmore, but that does leave what so eight damage mm. on the board anyway, so that's still kind of rough. Does he have any other option though? You just follow up with the technician, I guess. Yeah, you pretty much have to make do with what you have and. Mm -hmm. This is the you best, the the best possible. Yeah, this right, is yeah. the best possible possible play for Orange. You have to get rid of the Soul Priest, because uh, yeah, the 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 damaging of minions is even more threatening mm -hmm. than uh, healing your healing your own minions up. Yeah, and also um, one of the problems for Orange is is the Dragon variant. When you lose the board completely and so completely as you did last turn, you need to do something pretty drastic to try and fight back on. Because without the board, you're not going to win the game. Whereas, you know, Crane's deck is actually mm -hmm. built to just not really care too much about the board and just negate that opportunity for their opponent. Uh, is this going to be a pyro circle trade? Because that would actually kill off the technician and leave all the minions alive, right? Yeah. And draw. And draw. And he, he can, can just draw yeah, more. circle it's again. It's okay. It's exactly nice. what he's going to do. He's going to draw five cards with that circle of healing. Okay. That is scary. <laughs> that like is scary me because now Orange knows Crane is going to have all the answers yeah. for whatever I can do. And what can I even do about it? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, and look at, you know, you can see Orange's expression on the camera there. He's just like, uh, <laughs> you know, you've just drawn most of your deck. And when your deck is actually just full of answers, how is anything I play going to stick? To be fair, Orange initially going into this matchup might have expected uh, an outcome like this. Mm -hmm. And he's not in desperation mode any anyway yet. He has one class left. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, he can still rely on that Shaman maybe to edge, him, edge out a victory. Yeah, so is the. I mean, you kind of have to just go wide here with as much as possible, I feel. Yeah, but. <laughs> that, it, it, that does, it, do, it doesn't do much, but it's your only option to have a chance, right? De delaying the inevitable. Let's just say that there's absolutely no no way of a comeback ever for Orange in this situation. Yeah, I mean, if you had a bit more health, you could maybe like try for the for the Isera yeah, and something nuts, but he doesn't have Ysera, enough health to do that. Getting Isera awakens would be pretty huge, mm. but of course now with 14 health and mm, six facing down six minions, it's uh, it's not going to be a viable mm -hmm. strategy. Just a Okay, we're going to see the Alchemist come up to help to heal back up a little bit. Twilight Guardian, not bothering with the Cleric, can't get any... Uh, oh, didn't have the mana. I thought it was on 10 mana for some reason. Uh, so, yeah, just going to present as much as board as he can, but... Look at Crane's Cleric... Uh, Alchemist, sorry. What a boss. He's been on the board for so long. <laughs> <laughs> He's traded so well. You've done a good job. Earned your spot in the deck, at least. I wonder. Okay, so... I mean, at this point, with so many cards, Crane can almost do what he wants here to clear. But is there anything that's like super optimal? Because the problem now is it, Crane's in a weird situation is you have a massive board as Control Priest and have two Excavated Evils, which aren't really going to help you out too much. Yeah, but of course, Crane does have the ways of pretty much easily dealing with those minions here and uh, pushing Priest for a bunch of haste damage at the same time. It's such a... So it's an, an oppressing card to play against if the person playing it's ahead uh, and drawn a million cards. There's so many spells still left to play and they're going to just gain a ridiculous amount of healing. And now is a 3-8 with a powered shield. The body's so huge, it's extremely difficult to deal with. And I like this as well from Crane. Just remove every minion off the board. It's a minion-based deck. The Dragon Priest like very reliant on just outpowering their opponent with huge dragons. Yeah, but and it's just not going to be. But look enough. at this. B but because of the trades that Crane just made, he gave up the onboard lethal. He could have just uh, straight up ignored the Dr. Alchemist and threatened lethal in that scenario. Now, actually, Isera might be a viable option. Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking about is 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 Orange going to be afraid of Holy Nova? 
because of Crane's drawn so many cards. But at this point, I guess you can't really afford to play around it anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you see the onboard lethal is not there, mm -hmm. so we just go for the Isera right now, and this is exactly what Orange is doing. And now Crane will try to find that two damage that he needs to finish off this game. There's Holy Nova, I assume. And uh, let's see if he gets it. So there's Power Shield into the Cleric. Not going to help. Does it have one more draw? Can actually get uh, can he get multiple draws? I don't believe so, no, because the only spells he can actually cast are the Excavated Evil, which would kill the uh, Acolyte anyway. So no need to try and combat that. Oh, we'll there's actually power. no Holy Nova. I'm, I'm oh, there's no Holy yeah, Nova in there. Oh, no okay. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me then. He's uh, not afraid of Holy Nova at all. So he knows there's nine in the deck. Yeah, the only burst uh, would have been a potential like Orcanai. Mm -hmm. That would have been two damage. Yeah. Okay. So then, do you just take the approach of pretending your Sarah isn't there? Because this is actually, I think you just have to go face and just set up some kind of lethal here and, and just hope the, yeah, card, the hope the card wasn't awakens. Yeah. Because also, if you push him that hard, then he can't awakens anyway, right? Because he'll die. The thing is, if he even if there is a Sarah awakens, there's two minions that survive it. Sure, Sarah can kill one of them. Yeah, and, but then there's still and also be one there minion left would over. need to be exactly awakens from Isera plus a heal enough to get him past five. That's right. And clear the board. Yeah. So, you know, you just put him in a situation where it's extremely unlikely well, that Orange is going to be able to survive. Let's say, let's say hypothetically, he had uh, Isera awakens in this situation. He could have played Dark Alchemist to survive the Isera awakens. Uh, he could have. Um, Killed off one of those uh, big minions with Isera, and then thrown in the Taunter, the Wormist Agent, mm -hmm. in the way of the other minion. Yeah, so there would have actually been a way to survive. Or just heal himself up, I guess. That would have been enough as well. Yeah. So, but yeah. It wasn't Awakens, and it was Nightmare, which, when your opponent's on 30 health, is definitely not going to help. Well, I'm not going to be enough. And that is going to be the game as uh, Crane evens it up in a pretty convincing fashion, actually. Just managed to actually just clear off all the pressure that Orange could muster early on and then just switch it around. I really like the uh, the Sylvanas. was was kind of a big point there, taking away yeah, the Yeah, that, that was pretty much um, Orange's last hope of clearing the board. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Isera, um, I mean, Sylvana spoiled that plan. And Tomb would have done the same job, but, yeah, in this case, it was Sylvanas with a flash of the Orcanai. Very, very uh, neat way of dealing with the situation. Yeah, we're going pretty swiftly into what will be the last match of Crane versus, uh, the last game, sorry, of Crane versus Orange 2 2. It's going to be Crane's Control Priest versus Orange's Mid Range Shaman. Yeah, and <laughs> this is definitely going to be, I think, in Crane's favor. Um, Priest, over the history, of, if the history of Hearthstone has told us one thing, that it's that uh, the Control Priest beats uh, Mid Range Shaman. But yeah, of course, um, Midrange Shaman did get a huge power surge uh, with, with cards like uh, Thing From Below especially. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Spirit Claws are also pretty cool to deal with, uh, to deal with those uh, early minions from the Priest. And Golden Spirit Claws as well. They look pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. now Thanos as well. So he's got like the on-demand spell power. Which is why, yeah, more and more of these decks are now running like Thanos, Double Drakes as well, just to, you know, the addition of the cards actually just being good in general. You can actually turn on the spell power for the for the Spirit Claws, as well as the AoE clear, because Maelstrom Portal as well is like a hell of a lot better with even just plus one spell power. Yeah, of course, with spell damage, I, w I might add. Yeah. So we see uh, uh, also something to note in this matchup and what's really going to cause a problem for Orange, I imagine, is mid-range normally wants to build up quite a wide board of totems uh, and just like, you know, medium to small minions in general. And then there's like two Excavated Evils, uh, Soul Priest Circles. You know, there's so much AoE board clear that will be effective against Orange's list that this yeah. could be a real, real problem. The Excavated Evil against mid-range Shaman is always yeah. very huge and... Uh, of course, Orange does have things from below and Fire Elemental as well, where Orkanai Flash Heal is already waiting. And, and also just, uh, you know, the potential to just draw into Shadow at Death by then as well. You know, they just it's like yeah. Priest can directly answer everything Orange wants to do and with the another Shaman list. And another great tech card, the Mind Control tech, right? Why not? <laughs> so It's so good against Shaman. Yeah, so cool this format, like showing us decks like this that is, can can be viable if the situation is correct, and really being able to create a deck that pinpoints a specific archetype or uh, class. It's kind of cool. We've seen uh, Crane play this um, Acolyte of Pain, even though we see that Orange does have the 
improved spirit clause, but of course Crane just does want uh, to draw, is, is happy to draw even one card with his Acolyte just to get closer to that AoE that he needs, the circle of healing for the Orcanai or the Excavated Evil. Yeah, and also just to soak up the weapon charge and you know, take some of the turn, so not too bad at all, but there is uh, you know, decent turns well for Orange just with the Tuscar Totemic. Let's see what comes out of there. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very hard balancing act basically for Orange. Um, to figure out how many minions can he commit to a board at a time, mm -hmm. because there's, with so much AOE on, at Crane's disposal, not just uh, organized circle and activity, but also like pyromancer turns, there's def and mind control tech as well, right? That's also a card mm -hmm. he might have, uh, he, he will have, have to play around because he knows it's in the deck. So Orange will, yeah, most of his thinking process will go towards uh, determining how many minions can I have on, can yeah. I commit to the board? Well, we, well, we saw that then, like uh, Orange could have just got extra damage, mm -hmm. just raw extra damage from the Flame Tongue Totem that turn if he wanted to, and a continued reduction on things from below uh, in the future. But he decided against it because one, it would have put him to four. Um, for minions, as you mentioned, for the man control tech, but also coin excavated evil just to like throw away the flame yeah. totem. Do, you know, it is a thing that could happen. So it would have been a little bit punished there and now. Yeah, the only time that more options. the only time that orange can pretty much overextend is when he has cards like feral spirits and tuscar totemic, to um, cards that help you um, refill the board immediately in an yeah. instant. So we're gonna, looks like we're going to see the Flame Tongue Totem this turn and help trade down into this Priest of the Feast because I don't think you can actually leave this guy up. The, the sheer health total on this minion is such a pain to deal with when it can keep you being healed by the Priest. And yet another thing that Orange has to keep in mind is uh, the fact that Crane still has the coin and that means that he is able to play Cabal Shadow Priest, one of his two Cabal Shadow Priests, mm -hmm. on the following turn. So yet another thing that Orange has to play around. Also, the Harrison. Oh my <laughs> so goodness! For, for just it's just like <laughs> it, it feels like a nightmare matchup for Orange, <laughs> and this is definitely not what he wanted to see. Well, the problem as well is he, what, what I feel you can't do a lot of the time is fall fall into the trap of trying to play around every tech card in the deck because then your turns are going to become so inefficient that you're going to fall behind due to you trying I'm to dodge every single tech card available. I mean, we're talking so much about uh, how what the crane, all the cards that Crane has that just screw up the Shaman and. <laughs> Like eventually, when when you have this many this many possible scenarios where the priest just completely completely wrecks you, you might be in a scenario already where you have to like right off the bat, not care about anything. Exactly, yeah, and just just go and just jam yeah. everything, yeah. and just hope for the best. <laughs> and okay. Hope that the, hope that Crane doesn't have anything. Yeah, the relevant. second spirit clause has been played. Is this going to be enough to draw out the Harrison? Because you know Harrison a double spirit claw, not too bad. Um, but we will see that Orange will have the Doomhammer available if not. So Crane might actually just feel comfortable, especially because he can play Cabal this turn if he wants to, or a mu multitude of other options with Alkanai, uh, Hero Power Circle, which would actually just clear off the board now. I feel that because Spirit Claws at this moment in time for Crane isn't too much of a threat, you just hold Harrison for Doomhammer because he knows it's in the deck. You just hold on to it and say you either play Doomhammer and get an initial yeah. like double rock bite of value on that single turn, which is what Orange might try to do, at least mm. to just gain the most out of it, or you just play Doomhammer, hit me for four, then lose. Yes. <laughs> you know, the lose a Doomhammer and I draw a million cards. But since since Crane is uh, since Crane does know Orange's exact list, uh, he will never be in a situation where he just. He, what, won't, he, he will he know his list, right? He, yeah. What? He will, the list are public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since he does know the list. Oh, I thought you said he doesn't. I was like, oh, pretty sure yeah. he does. He does know the list. So I, I think if he, as long as he keeps the Saracen and never is in range of uh, like a really big uh, Doomhammer burst, then uh, yeah, he, he cannot lose this game. What, what did you think of the Harrison over the uh, Soul Priest hero power circle there to clear the board? Well, I, I think um, the thought process behind this is that the Soul Priest still has great uh, value with the Flash heals, and he didn't want to uh, mm -hmm. waste that right now, it seems. Mm -hmm. He just wanted okay. to dig uh, further into his deck to get that Excavated Evil. Okay. Or like a Pyromancer even would be good enough. Yeah. It's ju it, it's just f it looks rough, doesn't it? You've cleared off the weapon, which, if you'd clear the board, would have been a 1-2 weapon, and left a minion very open to easy trades and a lot of value still on the board in terms of the flame tongue and the thalos. Yeah, I, I definitely, <laughs> I mean, I am, I'm also in the camp uh, that would have kept the Harris for the Doomhammer, I feel like, but it seems like Crane felt the pressure already uh, because the board was 
getting kind of threatening as yeah. well. And now he has uh, when, evil. with that kind of board, along with the Doomhammer uh, Rock Fighter, it might already be too much damage threatened. Because mm -hmm. imagine, like, because you also have to consider when uh, Harrison, when I mean, when when you play Harrison, you uh, cannot clear the board most of the time at the same turn. Yeah. So. But you could have cleared the board. Yeah. And course, then if you yeah. really wanted to, just played Harrison because the the. The, the weapon probably wouldn't have been played as a 1-2. You know, wouldn't have been used. Yeah. You'd still get the double charge. But we do see the ball get cleared up. And also, as a side note, this does put an Excavated Evil into Orange's deck. So he's kind of effectively got a dead card he can draw yeah. into. Because Excavated Evil is not the card you really want to draw into when you're playing at Midrange Shaman. It is what it is right now. And I feel like Orange needs more options here. He needs to f dig deeper into his deck to find those... Rock by the weapons to represent a huge amount of burst with the Doomhammer. He knows the Doomhammer will be safe. After all, Harrison Jones has been played already. So now I think like the optimal play would be the Mana Tide Totem, just to dig deeper into the deck. Sure, it can get stolen by Cabal Shadow Priest, mm. but I don't think Orange cares about this right now. Is he even com going to commit to Toscar Totemic? Sure yeah. Looks like. Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess he goes for the Toscar Totemic over the Mana Tide because it represents more pressure right now. Especially when you get Flame Tongue Totem. Yeah. For me. That's uh, another issue that Crane is going to have to deal with here, but he does have his options. He still is holding on to that Soul Priest Circle as like a, you know, a secondary clear, and I feel... Like, I mean... He definitely can pull the trigger on this right yeah. now. He does not really need the Flash Shields to uh, damage minions, to damage big minions. After all, he does have Entomb, he does have Shadow War Death in hand, and then later on the Flash Shields are going to be valuable when uh, Orange tries to push for the mm -hmm. Doomhammer burst and then just heal, uh, he can heal back 10 with two Flash Shields. Yeah, and I also feel like any other play here is just not good enough. It's just not, not even close to good enough. He could Cabal the, the Flame Tongue, but you still left like a full board, uh, almost a full board for Orange to, to mess around with on his turn. He even coins out the Darkshire Alchemist, dealing five damage He's to Orange. He's got double here. Flash Shield, why not? Sets up lethal. Yeah, this is the perfect lethal setup here, and Orange. All of a sudden, under so the much pressure. Flash heal. <laughs> it's 15 damage from three cards from Priest. Well, four, I guess, because you need the Soul Priest, but still. Yeah. Orange does have a way of handling this board, though. He can use Hex and uh, just a Doom Hammer to uh, clear both minions out. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like with that Alchemist, you you kind of it's a very, um, very big like signifier that. Crane does have burst, because why would you save it in a matchup where you kind of want to be more controlling and defensive? Why would you just randomly hit face with five with the Alchemist if you can heal later? Especially because there's Brad in the deck as well. So I, I like this, um, as you said, just playing it extremely safe and just saying I'm not going to die to random priest burst, because frankly, that's the worst way to go out of a tournament. Yeah, but Brand Alchemist is not a thing here. No, no, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, because yeah. that was the other deck. I, I just mean, like, in, in general, because it was yeah. an aggressive move, you don't want to, like, you know, there's a potentially second Alchemist at double flash heal. All right, there's the Rock Biter. He's going to need another one, though, in order to make this uh, burst significant. Yeah. Oh, what do you think about the, the Mana Tide? Or skipping the Mana Tide? With Orange now uh, seeing that Crane has drawn so many cards, he kind of wants to bait the uh, the uh, Cabal Shadow Priest mm -hmm. because uh, by this time Crane definitely has at least one Cabal in his hand, so he does not want to give uh, Crane like good value. In for example, this Mana Titan or or a Wolf. Okay, the second Soul Priest is actually uh, pulled as well, so <laughs> there is a ch there's still hope of the double Flash Heal burn for lethal for Crane, and this is kind of, kind of a little nice play, just plays the pyro where combined with the Entomb to clear off the totem. It will happen. Yeah? I don't see I don't see Orange <laughs> not dealing with this uh, Pyromancer with the uh, no, with Doomhammer. No, excavated evil. <laughs> we got this. Yeah, if he plays around it, <laughs> yeah. if, if he surely plays around it, a dub, around <laughs> double flash heal and... <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. He is going to attack the Pyromancer, and that is going to spell disaster for Orange, because Okanai, double flash heal and hero power will lethal. Yeah, you you never expect a double flash heal. Although with this, with the way Crane was playing, I mean, it's very easy for us because we've seen this. But Crane has had two cards in his hand for almost all game, and he went very aggressive with the Alchemist. So this is going to be kind of crazy. Maybe you just don't ex expect the second Soul Priest. So Orange decides what he wants to do. He does want to skip. 
but this means that the game is over. As Crane's about to lock in the Soul Priest, double Flash Heal, and the Hero Power, and Orange is going to very swiftly know that this game is over, which is, means Crane wins 3-2 over Orange, knocking him out of the tournament, and Crane is going to continue in the lower bracket. And we see <laughs> we see once again the dominance of Priest in this format. When it <laughs> when it is good against the lineup, a specific lineup, then Priest, is, great. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Priest is great, right? Like, uh, sure, we like to hopper on Priest sucking so much on ladder and uh, yeah, just being the worst class. But as we can see, this nine deck format brings out all kinds of different uh, varieties mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, when it comes to lineups. Uh, the lineups always change depending on your opponent and uh, on the picks and bans. And then, of course, Priest has its time to shine, and when it shines, it shines very bright. Exactly, and especially when you you are not forced to play all of the classes, there is a class you can actually skip. So worst case, if Priest doesn't fit into what your opponent's lineup is, you just don't play it and play one of the others. So, you know, what do, what do you think about the Priest I overall? think the Priest has the new kill commands, yeah. right? <laughs> that's, one that's mana? <laughs> yeah, one, one mana, you just need an Aukenai with it, and it's a kill command, and then you do the finish The heal off. command, you mean? <laughs> Oh, Heal nice. command with hero power, 12 <laughs> damage. This is actually a decent way to finish off um, Warlocks as well, because usually they tend to go really low. Even if they play Reno Jackson, you can actually ca catch them off guard, right? Let's see the best plays of the match presented to you by HP, our sponsor of the PGL Tavern Taste 2016. Yep, very good. And we are going to. That's a cool series overall, actually. And pretty awesome to see the series go to 3 2, and a lot of variation in matchups, which was awesome to watch. See the first one now of the Druid versus the Tempo Mage, and Grain pretty much finishing it up in convincing fashion. With I feel like everything just went right for Crane here, and Orange could never really get hold of the board uh, too much early on to cause any form of threat to the Druid. And when the Druid isn't threatened and has to force removal out, it's going to feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, and the Yorks are run by Orange here. <laughs> it was it, it, it came close to clearing the entire board, but. The amount of spells that have been played mm -hmm. throughout the game from Orange just had not quite enough. And, yep. and it was the, so this was the game where, it, was, was it the Flame Lance onto the first Arcane Giant? Or am I thinking of it? It was no, Forbidden was, Flame. Ah, that was it. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Uh, Forbidden Flame on the first one, and then the follow-up of the second Arcane Giant made was it very, very unreasonable for Yogg to deal with the wide board as well as the Giant itself. So, I mean, that, this Yogg had six spells. Or five. Yeah, it wasn't like exactly that, a huge yog either, yeah. Too bad, too bad. And this was <laughs> this was the match where Orange decided to go kind of crazy with his Dragon Priest. And we saw the power of Brand just sitting on the board as well, getting a lot of value out. Never go full full double cleric, right? That was <laughs> you never saying. go full cleric. <laughs> Sometimes. I liked it here. Yeah, the especially his Dragon Priest, right? Like, you know, you, yeah. you have so many high value cards that you can just dump on when you're on 10 mana the following turn. I kind of like it. Well, that was actually sick when you think about it, that Priest is winning so much. I mean, okay, that was a mirror match this between Priest, MVP, so... look at the Twilight card yeah. here. I never dropped below, I think, nine in that game. It's like, how do you kill this? Many? By the way, Priest winning against Freeze Mage, mm -hmm. that's something that you don't see often, right? I mean, yeah. first of all, you don't see that matchup often, but second of all, it's being a matchup that is being presented as one when the Freeze Mage is actually heavily favored, right? Yeah, I think the, the key for me, you know, let's see if you agree, guys, but um, I've not seen too many Dragon Lists that run two Alchemists mm -hmm. either. It doesn't normally, or at least, you know, like I said, I've not seen too many lists you guys might have, but I feel like obviously they were the key in just pushing him we very, very right far. Here. Exactly. Pushing him so much out of reach continually. That was the second one, and with Bran sitting on the board as well, and there was no good way for Crane to deal with the Bran, which just made this even worse. Yeah. That's definitely true. So much healing. How can you deal with that, right? You have a limited yeah. amount of burn without attendiders. Like I said, it's the mixture of the, the sort of beefy dragon minions that mm -hmm. aren't easily cleared up combined with all the healing was really what gave Crane the most problems here. But now we can see the priest versus the shaman game. That was a yeah. good move, by the way. Yeah, it's really cool. Just a ni nice little clear up. This was pretty much like the dream matchup for Crane. <laughs> and it so many different ways of dealing with any kind of board that Shaman can provide, and we have yeah, we are we joined have by Crane the winner. Here. Congrats, you're advancing uh, while knocking out Orange out of the tournament. Feels bad for him, feels good for you. What, what do you have to say? <sighs> Not much. I mean, I'm happy I won, but definitely out of my comfort zone on, on some of, I, well, I mean, some of the games. Okay, we I, like the priests? You, I mean, my, my priests, I think I play a priest reasonably well. I mm -hmm. used to play this type of deck back in the day but it's like way more than a year ago I think 
Okay, but so I was really good with it then. And but I, I mean, there just turns where I, I feel like, what's going on? I never seen this before, and okay. I have to think out of the box. But I, I think I handled okay. There were definitely turns where after a while I was like, I should, yeah, I should have done the other thing maybe a couple turns ago or something. But ah. so more roof, uh, more room for improvement. That's good, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean. When you when you have still room to improve, then you can get you can be a better player. So uh, I'm guessing that you like the format. Can you tell us something uh, like how yeah. do you feel? Uh, what what are your feelings about the format now? The se second day that you're playing it, I like it. I mean, I just enjoy that we have we can ban away three out of the four mm -hmm. best classes, or like f we can ban a lot of the best decks, yep. and then we force people to play some weaker decks, and that's really when you see a lot of interesting things happen and people are really out of the comfort zone that's that's really cool i think i think the better players really do shine in in those scenarios okay that's nice to hear especially coming also from a pro player also because he's on the couch yeah. as a winner yeah <laughs> of course of course uh, but uh, i we didn't see any yoke shenanigans i mean there were some right but not to a full extent that we have we have seen in previous matches um so that's cool and uh, i feel like priest is becoming the mvp of this tournament uh, do you have that impression as well? No, but um, the the thing is that um, you have to you have to ban and pick in a certain way to avoid certain matchups, mm -hmm. and then naturally, if we priest is the weakest, then people are not really planning around it that much. Okay. So and then it's just it's like with the more druid bans we're seeing, priest is actually good versus shaman. So it's like the reason, but uh, no, priest is still bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but there's okay. a use for it in this format, right? You know, yeah, yeah. as we can see, Priest has actually performed relatively well ap across yeah. the past couple of days because you can be very, you can target very heavily with it, as opposed to you just lock in Priest on ladder and well, th you know, that's why yeah, Priest's not bad. Yeah, you know. not quite on par with the Druid win rate. No, but, uh, but, but still, still overperformed really in the, in our opinion. It, at it least. doesn't work on ladder, but it can work. Yeah, like when you when you get to queue it up into a specific matchup, yeah, it, it's yeah. fine. I mean, no deck no deck is so bad that it cannot win games, but yeah. but <laughs> but it's usually still a third pick, right? So yeah. and if you're a third pick, you're probably not an MVP. Except when your name's Tansifka. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that was a very cool one, but it was also because of life coach, very specific, you know, like deck deck mm -hmm. builds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we're not gonna keep you longer. Uh, we still have a lot of matches to be played today. So don't go anywhere. This is PGL Tavern Tales. Congrats, Crane, Thanks. for the win again, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Uh, and now we'll a short break, so don't go anywhere, guys. <laughs>